second case is where you have a constant a horizontal pipe right with a constant diameter right in such a case remember the velocity of the water in the pipe is going to be constant because the, if the diameter is constant it means there's no change in area no change in area means that the velocity is constant so because the velocity is constant it means v1 and v2 are equal hence we account for the average velocity in the what in of the water in the pipe right now how do we go about getting the frictional head loss if we're looking at a problem where you have a horizontal pipe with a constant diameter right so again you apply Bernoulli's between point 0.1 and point 0.2 right you apply Bernoulli's between point 0.1 and point 0.2 and in doing so right applying Bernoulli's between point 0.1 and point 0.2 taking into consideration that if you have a horizontal pipe right the h or the potential energy right tends to be the same hence it's going to cancel right so let's apply Bernoulli's between point 0.1 and point 0.2 so we have p1 plus um, half rho v1 squared right So P1 plus half rho V1 squared plus rho G H1 is equal to P2 plus half rho V2 squared plus rho G H2. Right, and then of course we are considering losses, uh, frictional losses in the pipe. So we are going to add the frictional head loss. Right, now because this variation of Bernoulli's each term is in terms of pressure right we're going to represent the frictional losses in terms of pressure as well hence we're going to have rho g h f right now as i've mentioned that because the diameter of the pipe is constant essentially v1 will be equal to v2 right so v1 is equal to v2 in this case Right, and then H1 and H2 are also equal. So H1 is equal to H2, right? Now, what does this mean as far as our equation? It means this will cancel that. Also, this will cancel that. So essentially, we are left with P1 is equal to P2 plus rho G HF, right? Now, remember the intention here is to calculate hf right now in solving for hf it means we have to transpose p2 so rho g hf is essentially equal to p1 minus p2 and then in solving for uh, hf it means we need to divide both sides by rho g right so obviously that cancels and then hf will be equal to now, if you think of P1 minus P2, right? If you think of P1 minus P2, that is essentially the change in what? The change in pressure, right? We can look at it from this perspective, right? So here you're going to have P1, you're going to have P2, right? Now, what tends to happen is that because of the shear stresses on the pipe walls right the pressure is going to decrease right from the entry section of the pipe to the exit section of the pipe right so meaning essentially p1 is greater than p2 right now the velocity is constant and uh, what really influences the pressure in this case is what is the shear stresses on the pipe walls right so because of the shear stresses on the pipe walls the pressure will tend to decrease from the entry to the exit right so meaning that the p minus p1 minus p2 
right, is actually the change in pressure. So essentially here you have the change in pressure over what? Over rho g. Now what does this tell us? It means that if we have p1 and p2, then you can simply just use this to calculate hf, right? Or if you've been given the change in pressure from entry to exit, then you can simply just use that, right? So essentially for a horizontal pipe with constant diameter, right, the frictional head loss is equal to the change in pressure over rho g, right? And then once you have hf, you can then go back to using either of these variations of Darcy's formula depending on what it is that you are looking for, right? Right, now we are going to look at Shays' formula, right? Now I want to look at Shays' formula. Now as far as Shays' formula, we use Shays' formula to calculate what? To calculate frictional head losses, just like we did with Darcy's formula, right? The only difference is the formulas, right? So for Shays' formula, we use hf is equal to i times l right where we already know hf is the frictional head loss right in the pipe and then i stands for the hydraulic gradient right now the hydraulic gradient is dimensionless right there's no physical si unit for it right hence us saying it is dimensionless and then l stands for the pipe length right now as discussed, right, for if we are considering, um, if we're considering frictional head losses, right, there's two cases that we basically look at, right. One of the cases is if we have two reservoirs that are connected by a pipe, or if we're looking at a problem where you have a horizontal pipe that has a constant diameter, right. Now, the hydraulic gradient. Right, the hydraulic gradient essentially is the gradient between the water levels, right, of the two reservoirs, right. If you're looking at a problem of two reservoirs being connected with a pipe, right. So the hydraulic gradient is the gradient between the two reservoirs, right. Now, if you look at the diagram I've drawn you here, right, the gradient essentially Right. If you just look at the, the the diagram, right. The what is this? The gradient, the hydraulic gradient is essentially going to be equal to what? The change in water levels, right. So the change in H essentially, the H one minus H two. So the change in H over what? Over the length of the pipe, right. Now. As discussed earlier, right, when we we're looking at how we apply Benoli's for a problem where you have two, res two reservoirs connected by a pipe, right, we saw that, right, we saw that HF is equal to what? HF is equal to the change in water levels. Meaning what? Meaning that even for this case, when looking at Shears' formula, right, when looking at Shears' formula, right, the change in H, so the change in H is essentially the frictional head loss over the what, over the length, which essentially is this formula here, right. If you have any questions regarding this, we can talk about it in the comment section, right. Right. Now the other formula that we have for Shays' formula is the one for velocity, right? The velocity is equal to C, which is the Shays' constant times the square root of M times I, right? Now, as mentioned, V stands for the average velocity of the water in the pipe, right? And then C is known as Shays' constant, right? And then M is what we call the hydraulic mean depth, right? And then I, we've already covered I. I is the hydraulic gradient. 
Now the the hydraulic mean depth, right? The hydraulic mean mean depth has a formula which is area over the weighted parameter, right? Now this is normally used in channels for fluid mechanics, right? But for mechanotechnics, right, in particular, right, we only look at circular pipes, right? Hence, as far as the area, right, the area of a circle we know is pi over 4 times d squared. So this would be pi times d squared over what? Over 4 times. Now, regarding the weighted parameter, right, if you can think of a circular pipe, right, the weighted parameter is essentially the circumference of the what? Of the pipe, right? And we know circumference is equal to what? Pi D. So this essentially will be pi d, right? Now this cancels with that. This d cancels with one d. Hence, the hydraulic mean depth is essentially equal to d over four, right? Where the d stands for the diameter of the pipe, right? So we can use this formula to calculate, right? Any of these terms so we can use it to calculate you know the velocity we can use it to calculate the chassis constant right we can use it to calculate the hydraulic no the hydraulic gradient right now there's going to be cases where you have maybe two unknowns right say you have v is an unknown and you haven't been given chassis constant Normally, or in typical cases, you are given Shares' constant. But if you are not given Shares' constant, right, and you also haven't been given the velocity, and there's absolutely no way you can calculate the velocity, right? So again, if you haven't been given Shares' constant, right, and you haven't been given velocity, and there is no way that you can calculate velocity, meaning that you cannot use you cannot use this formula to calculate Shares' constant because you have two unknowns essentially, right? Only in that case where you don't have velocity and you don't have the Shares' constant, hence you can't use, right, this formula, right? Then we use this special formula to calculate the Shares' constant, right? So the formula is C squared is equal to 2G over F, right, where G is the gravitational acceleration, and f is the frictional coefficient right so meaning if you have to get the Shears' constant right then of course you have to apply the square root here right on both sides hence c is essentially equal to the square root of 2g over the square root of the frictional coefficient right so we make use of this formula if and only if we cannot calculate Shears' constant using this formula. And that only happens if you do not have the velocity and there's absolutely no way that you can calculate the velocity. Right? So in such cases, that is when we use this special formula to calculate C. Then once you have the Shears' constant, then you can go back to this formula to calculate V right depending on what it is that you are looking for right so those are the formulas we use when considering frictional head losses right in the pipe right hopefully you find this uh, helpful see you in the next one